हेलो गाइस आई एम दीपक शुक्ला अ फाइनल ईयर एम स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू आर चैनल स्टडी में टुडे लेट्स लर्न अबाउट मिडल ईयर डिजीज दैट इज एक्यूट सुपरेटिव अटाइटिस मीडिया सो व्हाट यू मीन बाय एक्यूट सुपरेटिव अटाइटिस मीडिया एक्यूट मींस लेस देन फोर वीक्स सुपरेटिव मींस इन्फेक्टिव ओटाइटिस मीडिया इंडिकेट्स मिडल ईयर सो इट्स मेनली इन्फ्लमेशन ऑफ मिडल ईयर क्लफ्ट बाई पायोजेनिक ऑर्गनिजम कमिंग टू द पैथोफिजियोलॉजी ऑफ इट most of the diseases of middle ear the cause is defect in the station tube mainly et obstruction eustachian tube obstruction or occlusion it can be due to any cause nasopharyngeal cause nasal cause or palatal cause so here you need to draw this diagram and put an obstruction over the station tube to represent in the exam here middle ear ventilation is reduced due to the et tube obstruction that produces negative pressure in the middle ear and due to this negative pressure initially the mucosal cells of middle ear activates and it produces exudates if this exudate is infective it is called suppurative otitis media and if exudate is non infective it is called non suppurative otitis media depending upon the duration if it is less than 4 weeks it is called asom and if it is more than 12 weeks it is called csom what are the root of infections for asom it may be due to the et tube block or from the external auditory canal or hematogenous spread that is rare so draw this diagram in exam to represent this let's have a question why is aso more common in children and infants because eustachian tube in children and infants are shorter straighter and more horizontal whereas in adults there is some angulation between eustachian tube and middle ear therefore the asm is more common in children we will start with the predisposing factors for asm so first we have recurrent attacks of common cold urti exanthematous fever like measles diphtheria whooping cough chronic rhinitis sinusitis nasal allergy tumors of nasopharynx nasal packing of for epistaxis cleft palate that is palatal causes hmm. so which is the most common organism hmm. affecting infants and children are streptococcus pneumoniae and then haemophilus influenza some others are moraxella staph aureus e coli what are the stages of aso so this is the most important part of this stages of aso first one we have tubal occlusion then pre suppuration suppuration and resolution coming to how a disease progresses step by step we'll see here so stage 1 that stage of tubal occlusion what happens here is there is eustachian tube obstruction leading to negative pressure in the middle ear and when this increases it causes mild retraction of tympanic membrane so what symptoms it will cause it will cause only mild pain with mild hearing loss okay so what are the cause of tubal occlusion here hypertrophic turbinates deviated nasal septums polyp and tumor nasopharyngeal causes are enlarged adenoid coming to the second stage so from stage of tubal occlusion it will go to pre suppurative stage so here what you'll see again that et tube block was there now what happens there is hyperemia of the walls of the middle ear with exudates in the middle ear this will cause gross retraction of the tympanic membrane gross retraction of tympanic membrane okay and leading to symptoms like severe pain plus hearing loss here you'll see the cart wheel appearance cart wheel appearance okay so due to increased negative pressure inside the middle ear et tube is blocked exudate is increased then gross retraction of the tympanic membrane and the symptoms are severe pain plus hearing loss next stage is stage of suppuration again when there was et tube block and ascent of pathological organism was there what happened due to the serous fluid this tympanic membrane bulges forward serous exudate become infectious non suppurative contains wbc in pustules so here this tympanic membrane bulges forward with pus pointing and the symptoms is excruciating pain and fever plus severe hearing loss the next stage and the last stage or we can say stage of resolution stage of resolution what happens there is perforation of tympanic membrane 
and the release of pus from the middle ear the pattern of release of pus is like it will come out and then after for some time it will pause and then again it will come out that's why we we'll call it as pulsatile otoria so if we'll put a light on this it will be intermittent reflection of the light therefore we call it that lighthouse sign so in this stage when there is a perforation of tympanic membrane all the pus from the middle is it released so the symptoms will be decreased so the patient may present as decreased pain and fever the last stage is stage of complication if present if the organism is virulent patient or the patient is immunocompromised patient can go into the complications again summarizing the features of different stages so first stage we had stage of tubal occlusion here we had mild retraction of tympanic membrane four shortened head of malleus prominent malleolar port and stage of pre separation we have told you that is cartwheel appearance since blood vessels radiating from periphery to the center so you can imagine the blood blood vessel radiating from periphery to center giving the appearance of cartwheel stage of separation we have bulging tympanic membrane loss of all landmarks and stage of resolution you have perforation of tympanic membrane and it is usually in the antero inferior quadrant of pars tensa antero inferior quadrant of pars tensa that is very important so what is the treatment so first the treatment includes investigations also so what all things you need to do a simple otoscopy endoscopy and then uh, culture that will help so what are the treatment what things we use here so antibacterial th- therapy we will use antibiotics and the minimum duration should be of 10 days till fever is reduced and tympanic membrane looks normal and normal hearing we have to use antibiotics it should not be used for lesser days so what are the drug of choice actually ampicillin or amoxicillin variable then inadequate treatment therapy will lead to the serious otitis media so i have to told you that if it is used less than 10 days it may lead to the serious otitis media and again for the symptomatic relief to relieve the eustachian tube edema we can use nasal decongestants oral decongestants analgesics antipyretics ear toileting and dry local heat can be done what is the main mode of treatment here you can do meringotomy so here merings means tympanic membrane and tympano means middle ear okay so here merings means tympanic membrane so not in, so we have to do some hole procedure of holes okay so what are the indications of meringotomy severe pain with bulging drum so if, if there is a severe pain with bulging drum in complete resolution despite antibiotics persistent effusion beyond 12 weeks and asom with facial palsy we have to start with meringotomy in patients with asom meringotomy is done in the posterior inferior quadrant where posterior inferior quadrant why is it done in the posterior inferior quadrant because there is no major structure behind this it is a dependent quadrant and the quadrant does not heal immediately there therefore allowing the pus to drain the incision is curvilinear and incision is put in the posterior inferior quadrant that i have told since it heals slowly so it was all about the asm now there is one thing called necrotizing otitis media and that is caused by group a beta streptococcus hemolyticus and it is very virulent and aggressive organ and it will cause marginal total and subtotal perforations thank you so much wait for the csm class